Welcome back to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job and Nick Constantino here, and we are with Burke McLean of Market Wake. And uh, you know, we're uh, we've heard a lot of wonderful things about what you're doing and how you you look at clients. As you're talking to new clients or your existing clients today, I mean, think about this year. I mean, it's it's gone from what I've seen of um, clients being very very hesitant in Q1. Right? Mm. They weren't sure what was going to happen. When were rates going to drop? What was the economy going to do? People started to get excited, thinking things were going to turn. Then they've kind of gone south again. What 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 are you seeing today? What's what's the vibe in the marketplace? That there's no pattern. Yeah. There's no pattern. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm truly trying to find it, uh, but yeah. that's exactly what we've seen. Where we actually saw a. a an uptick in Q1. It okay. was it was great in Q1. I think people started and they said, oh, we're so tired of this recession talk. We've yeah. been under this recession mm-hmm. talk for 18 months. Yeah. Is it? Is it not? Is and that it, makes is sense for you. What you right. were seeing in Q1 is what I'm seeing in Q2. Two. Right? What she's yep. seeing at the planning level was what gets the implementation level gets totally. to me in Q2. So that, oh, that's, that's, that's along precise. the timeline. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 And, and the budgets were, I mean, you're given some budget. So open the year, start. start sure. Hey, let's all face it. Marketing usually uh, 40% of spending is probably done in Q1. Maybe even higher than that, a mini mm-hmm. brand marketing now, now budget. That, that being said, I have I yeah. think something has shifted about the holidays, the after holidays, the January, yeah. February. November, December takes so much out of people mentally and all these things. Yeah. January and February are pretty slow, not for planning, but uh-huh. for execution and implementation and sales and call to okay. action. It slows down. Home improvement is fades to almost nothing. Oh, yeah. And and you know the funny thing is, again, supply demand. You know what your message should be? You know when Wendy said they were gonna do surge pricing? Yeah. You might know Wendy's botched it. Don't say it's going to cost more stupid say when there's less people it will cost less to drive people when then there's less people who on christ earth wants to go and pay more money and wait more time i don't understand so people should apply those principles and in january february when it's slower that's when you lower your rate you're not saying it's on sale or discount you're saying there's less demand so we're charging less how did we get here? What the hell was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. please, what were we talking about? Pull, pull us out of this, <laughs> yeah, please. Sorry, what, I don't what, know. what else please. are you, Which what do you think for the rest of the year? <laughs> what, what, what do you uh, envision happening? Uh, it is, it, I think that the best thing that, we, we, that we're doing right now is proactively not putting our eggs in a single sector because I think that whenever a recession happens, it's typically sector yeah. driven. Yeah. yeah. And banks and are going to get banks demolished. In the home crisis before, the dot com crisis before, there's there's are patterns in sectors. And so what we're trying to do is just get as many different types of businesses as we can as clients because. I'm not sure what the sector is going to be like. Yes, banking, but what is the sector that's really going to get the brunt of this? I'm not sure. I wish I could tell you. Yeah. If I could tell I, you, then I, I, I would make, be. I will make some guesses since we're here. Uh, restaurants are going to get demolished. There's too many restaurants that are charging too much money, and you're going to see it. You're going to see something similar to your um, recessions previously, where that middle of the road are the ones that get killed. The ones they find out their five dollar value meals will do right. really fine. The really high end steakhouses yeah. will do fine. That middle tier that is undifferentiated, they will have a really hard time in this thing. And then I think banks, you're going to see the demolition of the regional bank. You'll either have hyper-local, small, or they'd consolidate their way up to be too big to fail because of previous things. So th- those are just two predictions from what I'm seeing out there. They'll, they'll, well, radio stations will cease to exist, but that's neither here nor there. Well, Target, here. Target came out uh, earlier last week, got yeah. killed. And so they're slashing Lower all pricing. of their prices, a minimum 30% on every single isn't product. It, isn't it, it funny? Did they raise them 25% before Probably. they were Probably, that's exactly what they raised them 30%. Yeah. 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 So you're still paying more. So those things don't change. Right. So what we well, do is we get to a point where the word inflation comes and all inflation is corporate America taking control back away from the consumers. OK, they do it. And then all of a sudden people won't pay and they go, oh, my God, we can't do this anymore. We need to be bailed out. This, it's the story is all this yeah. time. What is Delta charge for a flight right now? Six hundred dollars to oh. go to New York. And then they're going to wonder when everyone stops flying. And then they're going to come back to us and say yeah. we need to be bailed out. And how many times will we do the same well, stupid and, cycle? And the other thing is there's you, you get put ups and products. So, I mean, I've. Again, I'm in the paper industry now, and I look at what's going on in prices, and I've noticed it's you've probably started to see this in the last month. If you go buy toilet paper or towels, the rolls are smaller. They are. So guess what? Price has gone up. Shrinkflation. It's, it's, it's the same price that you paid three months ago, but now you're getting less. 10% less, 8% less number of you know sheets and things like that. And that's that's how the brands have, have looked to deal with that. 
Well, and I, I, I'm really seeing it in salaries, yeah. which no one really wants to talk about salaries, but we're seeing a massive inflation in these large companies where they were they just said, okay, we're gonna throw a ton of money at younger people and give them crazy salaries wow. that really, really, really damages small businesses where you, sure. you can't compete with that. And also, I don't know if you'd want to compete with some of the salaries that you're in, but now layoffs are happening for those people. You're gonna come back and yeah. exactly. And so there, there will also be a level of regulation on these high salaries that have come out with all these massive company saying, okay, go get the best talent, throw money at it. And now they're realizing, ooh, we can't actually sustain this. Yeah, I agree. And especially at states like Georgia, where it's an at-work state, where you can do whatever you want to. That contract means nothing. So I think that that's what, right. but I think I think you're right. Look, they it was a talent grab. You have mm -hmm. the money to do it. It's always, it's it's a short-term goal. It's not guaranteed money. Like no. it's just a short-term thing. We've seen right. a couple periods of the exact same thing. And the, right. But look, the truth is, cream always rises to the top. I've had interviews of people from corporate America that say they want to work here. I'm like, you have a great job at a gigantic corporation and position six above me. Why are you coming in here yeah. asking me for a job? Like, I don't understand. And that's the answer is because, so realistically, so right. you see in the right on the wall because you're probably underperforming oh, hyperinflated yeah. salary. So you want to come work here. Tell me about what are your experiences and you got to see the looks I get. Yeah. Tell me about six clients that you've dealt with in Atlanta that you can bring over here. The looks, I, the, the, sh the stares yeah. I get. How much money do you want? $250,000. Yeah. Okay, so look, like you've added no value to my but on line, you're leaving something you said is great. This doesn't make any sense. Now, luckily, I just don't care, so I can actually have that conversation with people, and their face is amazing when I do. They both, <laughs> I bet. I anyway, bet. We got off topic. Yeah. Honest conversations, though, which goes it back is. a little bit to what you're dealing with with your clients. Completely. Well, and, and going back to those exact salary conversations, I mean, that that is where we're seeing there's a discrepancy in brands who want to save costs by hiring agencies. And this is a cost cutting mechanism to say, okay, well, we're not gonna hire in-house, we're gonna hire this agency. Well, thinking through that process and that mechanism, okay, if you this is a cost saving exercise, then you have to be realistic as a brand to say, okay, what type of support am I looking for? Tactical, right. in right. which case maybe it is yeah. cost savings. Or, or, or are you looking for strategic? In which case, leadership. maybe it's not cost savings. I completely agree with you. And having different buckets of that where we right. can be honest and realistic, because that's what I do with a brand yeah. to say, hey, based on the budget, it looks like you're going to need more tactical oriented work. That's fine. It's probably going to be a junior-ish team. That's fine. Right. If you want to have more strategic full funnel work, that's going to be a different cost. And you have to be honest with those conversations or a brand is going to come in and they're going to think that they're getting strategy and they're going to get tactics. Yeah, but again, what, what, what do you want to accomplish? Exactly. You if you're going to take any business you can, then you're not having that conversation. Then you're not you're having that conversation. So I will, what, what do you think about the fractional CMO? Because all those conversations ah. you just talked about, we talk about trends. Um, I think that there is nothing dumber. I think that saying a fractional CMO is easy way for a vice Thank president you. of marketing to get a freaking title on them. But really, they're not doing anything but either taking on too much burden or not doing enough. So now in some hyper niche industries. For example, the guys at Prize Picks brought a fractional CMO that had experience at DraftKings. So you're Great. taking somebody with experience in an industry and just bring him here because you don't maybe can't afford to pay. That kind of makes sense because that's, that's a small that, that industry. There's not a lot of those kind of companies. But in most situations, when I see fractional CMO, I look and see a really a crappy consultant. resume. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, a consultant, but a call consult, consult, consultant then. Just say it's yeah. a consultant. Oh, Nick, the first, the second we see one of our brands get a fractional CMO, I'm like, all right, put the clock on. We've got probably a month left because what they do is they come in and in order to okay. prove themselves, they change everything. And it's like, this agency is fired and this agency is fired and we're going to completely change. And and they, they make these big, bold claims with zero knowledge of well, how the business is working. Because then they can away. Because, because then they can fade away. They're fractional. They, they have yeah. no responsibility. And that's where, as a CEO, I want to get all these CEOs and be like, you just hired someone who has zero responsibility for the rest of the business. Like, yeah. do you really want to They're not financially someone? engaged. They're not financially CMOs engaged. are always C-suite. So they and have corporate And they're not afraid stocks, of getting so they're, fired. They're involved. And yeah. they're not afraid of getting fired because no. they're already going to be fired. Well, because well, there's another 100 assholes that'll put them as a fractional CMO of their business. Hey, they're they're just looking at their BD. You know, they want... If, did, you say they have people, did you say they have BD? BD? No. <laughs> Is that, they they BD? want their three or four clients and if the, frankly, if they get two, they're happy. Yes. So, but... Is right. that because of their BD? <laughs> That's another podcast that uh, Nick's got on the side. So with that, let's wrap this up. Uh, Brooke, thanks so much. It's been great to uh, have you on and uh, uh, definitely uh, learn more about Market Week out there. So you've been listening to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3. We'll, we'll be back. We'll be back.